table in the foyer. Just look for the blue sign. Oh, yes, and about the screaming children. No, no. <laughs> Please join us for this, our Centennial Trivia Challenge at Molly Malone's this Thursday at 6 p.m. And for other upcoming events, look at your good news to go. Once again, we welcome you, welcome especially those of you visiting with us. And now, let us stand and greet one another. Let us pray. O oh God, we come into your presence, for indeed we know that you are the one who sustains our lives. You are the one who gives that nourishment that enables us to discover the life that you want for us. Be with us this day as we praise your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Please stand for our call to worship. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing and give praise to God's name. Trusting in God's gracious love and mercy, let us come together and confess our sins. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your way. You offer the joy of your spirit, yet we waste away in sin and grief. You offer the life of your word, yet we turn away in doubt and despair. Forgive us, God of grace. By the power of your spirit, make us more tender and kind, living as your beloved children, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Friends, there is good news. We have new life in Christ. Our old lives are gone and new lives have begun. And we are forgiven in Christ. Amen. <laughs>
Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for the Lord. And in his word, I hope. I hope more than those who watch for the morning. More than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is steadfast love. And with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. The word of the Lord. Okay, does that work better? Oh, ba it's true what they say about batteries. Sometimes they help. That battery was put in this morning. What do you think happened? 
Mike, you don't know? You, what do you think? You don't know? Okay. That one I want to talk about. Okay. I want to talk to you all today. You think it might, it might have? Okay. What I want to talk to you today about is how many of you ever have to have a babysitter when you're at home? Do you ever have to have a babysitter? We had one a lot of times. You had one a lot of times? You've had one sometimes? Yes, yes. You've had babysitters? I have one. I had a couple. You had a couple? <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. When you, is it the same babysitter that you get every time? Is it someone that you know? Because when... when Mine is someone I know. It's, um, no, um, it's someone you know? Yeah. Okay. She can't think of who it is, but it is someone she knows. Okay. Well, let me tell you. When our children were small... And when Daniel's dad was living at our house, what happened was that they had some favorite babysitters. And whenever Charlene or Suzanne would come, they would be real happy that they were there. But then one day we said we couldn't get Charlene and we couldn't get Suzanne. And you know what they did? They started crying. Are you kidding me? I said, what's the matter? We got Amy. We don't know Amy. Ooh. I said, well, I'm sure she's nice, but we don't know that, they said. And what I want to talk to you about this morning is I want to talk to you a little bit about the difference between who bodies and nobodies. Do you know what, who a who body is? A who body is somebody that you know and you like and they're important to you. A who body is somebody that you have a relationship with. How many of you have grandparents? Do your grandparents ever babysit? They don't babysit. They don't babysit? But when they, when they come and visit you, are you glad when they come? Why? Because you know them, right? They're, yeah. And okay, okay. Okay, yes, Mike. We're lost. My great granddaddy died. Oh, see, we're, now we get, it's going worse here. Okay. Well, the thing about it is, is your grandparents want to be who bodies in your life. They want to be important in your life, and that's why we joke a lot of times. The other day, someone came to me and they said, Well, we're moving out of town. And I said, Well, where are you going? And they told me, they said, But guess what? Both sets of grandparents have already said, we'll move there. And I said, so are you changing your location? <laughs> no, but they were glad. They were excited. You know why? Because they wanted their children to be around their parents. They like having grandparents around. It saves you a lot of babysitting money, for one thing. I mean, it's very practical. But the other thing is, your children are comfortable with them. Well, Jesus wants to have a relationship with us too. And that's what the scripture is about today. We're going to talk more about that later. That God loves you and wants to be an important person in your life. Do you believe that? You say maybe yes, maybe no. Will you consider it? Okay. He's going to think about it. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you do want to have a relationship with us, that you want to reach out to us and to love us and to care for us. We ask, God, that we have that comfort with you that you want to have with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you. Do I get to keep the mic? <laughs> okay. Okay. Let me find a Bible here. Our scripture this morning is taken from the sixth chapter of John's Gospel. We're going to be reading verse 35 and then verse 41 through 51. As you remember, this chapter begins with the feeding of the 5,000. And now we come to this section. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. 
Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. Everything that the Father gives to me will everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I shall lose nothing of all that he has given me. Beginning at 41. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. And all God's people said, Amen. Last summer, for some reason, my mother thought it uh, needed to be said that she told me the story of what it was like to grow up in her house as a child. And what she told me was that uh, the house that they lived in had a kitchen that had a wood stove. And because it had a wood stove, fire, danger, it was detached from the house. There was a little walkway back to that kitchen, but it was detached in case it caught on fire. Flora, the cook, lived in a room right next to that kitchen. And my mother said there were seven children in their family, and each morning Flora would get up, build a fire in that wood stove, and she would begin making biscuits between 4.30 and 5 in the morning. It took two hours for her to make enough biscuits for the day because they had bread at every meal and because there were also six farmhands in addition to the whole family that were eating each one of those meals. And my mom said that if she got up, they, 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 she and her sisters, there were three of them, they would race to see who could get up the earliest so they could go get in bed with Flora in the morning before she got out of bed. Because if they were the one that won the race, they got to help her make the bread. And they loved making the bread with Flora. And she said over the years, her relationship with Flora grew. They came to love her and her presence with them. That bread. Now, a lot of us these days, we're on low-carbohydrate diets, and everybody watches how much bread you eat. Last night, I, uh, Janie made bread. We don't do that very often, but when company comes, sometimes it does show up at our house, and sure enough, it did show up at our house. She made some bread. It was delicious. Imagine that you live in a culture where bread is absolutely vital for life. It was considered to be the sustenance for your survival because bread fills you up. Bread builds you up. Bread is not only what you eat at the meal, but bread may even be how you eat the other food. You use the bread to eat it. Bread was vital in that culture. And Jesus said, I am the bread of life. 
I am the one who knows the Father. I am the one who has seen the Father. And now I am the bread of life. And when he says this, here these people are. They begin to say, now wait a minute. We know who this guy is. We know he grew up here. We know his parents. How can he say he's from heaven? How can he say he's the bread from heaven? And then they ask about the manna in the wilderness. They say, you're talking about like when God gave the manna in the wilderness? He says, no. It's not the same. The people who ate that bread died. They would eventually die. But he said, this bread that I bring is the bread that gives you eternal life. Those who eat this bread will never die. Now, they become angry at him because he's saying this about who he is. Because Jesus wants to have a personal relationship with us. Now, granted, we say, now wait a minute. Our relationship with Christ is a lot more than just a personal relationship. It's about justice. It's about uh, caring for our neighbors. It's about being there for each other. It's about a lot of other things than just a personal relationship. But at the foundation, John says, it is a personal relationship. God cares about us in that way. Jesus wants to be a who body in our lives, as we talked about in the children's sermon and didn't get anywhere. But, true. True. There is that moment in our lives when we realize that there's someone important to us and that it makes a difference to us. When our basement flooded, uh, we were going to leave for vacation the next day and two of my neighbors showed up to help us. Now, here they are helping us with our getting fans and helping us clean out the water in our basement. And then what shocked me was they took me aside and they said, okay, you're going to leave town. You're going to leave us a key to your house. You're not going to think any more about this. We'll take care of everything. They go get a ladder. They climb up on my house. They unclog the gutter that was clogged. They began to get fans set up in my basement. And I'm sitting there going, now, granted, these are my neighbors. I know these people. We've known each other for 10 years. But you see, you don't really realize that people can develop that kind of trust over time that enables you to really have a deep relationship. Jesus wants that kind of relationship with us. Mother, when my dad uh, had to have his surgery for his Parkinson's disease, and he had to have a caregiver, uh, really 24 hours a day, she did it at night, and she had someone come during the day, but the man she had come during the day, he had to be hospitalized for three weeks. And while he was in the hospital, she had to find someone to take care of my dad, only she couldn't find anyone. She looked and looked. She called agencies. No one could help her. She didn't know what to do. So she finally thought, well, maybe I can work it out so I can take care of him in the morning and run to work and work a while and come back and check on him. But she realized that wasn't going to work when she came home one day and he told her that the man she sent over had come by the house to look for those papers she wanted. Well, of course, she hadn't sent anyone. And so she realized she had to get someone to stay there, and she couldn't think of who she could call. And then she remembered Flora. Flora, who was now 80 years old. She goes to see Flora, and she tells her the situation, and Flora agrees to come help her. Flora's there at the house, and just as my mother was afraid of, the man came back. He came back, and he insisted that he be let in, and Flora wouldn't let him in, and he began to try to pry the front door open. 
Flora went to the closet. She got the shotgun that belonged to my dad. She loaded it. She came back. She stood in front of the door, and she said, Leave. If you pull on the door again, I'm going to shoot. He left and never came back. <laughs> now, how do you get to a relationship where you can trust someone with the very people that you love? Where you can trust someone so much that you know you can call on them and they will be there for you? How do you get to that relationship? And how do we get to that relationship with Jesus? It's about time and commitment and prayer and study and it's about knowing a love that is greater than any love that you can imagine Jesus says I am the bread of life when we take that bread into our bodies at communion we're being reminded that we are filled with the very presence of God in our lives in a way that changes us in a way that claims us for God in a way that transforms us so that we can be loving to others Victor Hugo uh, tells a story about something that happened right after the revolutionary war excuse me <laughs> the French Revolution be a very different war the French Revolution it seems that there was a family uh, a mother and two children and they were had lost their house they had no place to live after the war they were wandering in the woods eating berries and whatever else they could find to sustain their lives they look down the road one day this family and they see soldiers coming and out of fear they hide in the woods but the children couldn't remain quiet. They became afraid. They made noise. And so when the soldiers came by, they realized that they were hiding. And they came over and they brought them out at gunpoint. They took the family to their captain. The captain immediately saw that they were starving. And so he reaches into his desk drawer and he pulls out a roll. And he hands it to the mother the mother takes the roll and breaks it in half and gives it to the children. One of the guards that had arrested them looked at the captain and said, Why did she do that? Is it because she wasn't hungry? And the captain said, No, she did it because she's a mother. It's all about God's relationship to us in Christ that changes not only our lives but enables us to be people that change the lives of others let us pray God we thank you for sending us your son Jesus to be with us to be in relationship with us to be your bodily presence among us to be the one who changes our lives so that we might change the lives of others in Jesus name we pray amen
Together, let us affirm our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. When you hear the words, God of grace, please respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Faithful God, we pray for your creation, for beautiful nature, bodies of water, and for our very own lives. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray for our world, for the brokenness and strain we all feel each day, for people living with hunger and poverty, for our military and for all those living in war zones. We pray for victims of violence and all who live violent lives, for those who suffer in fear and those who die needlessly. May they seek peace in their lives and see you at work in the lives of all those around them. God of grace, we pray for our world leaders, our country's leaders, our state leaders, and local community leaders. We give thanks for their leadership and ask that you give them hope for a better future for all of us. Heal broken communities and shine your light on them when dark days seem so prevalent. God of grace. Loving God, today there are people in pain and people longing for your healing touch. We pray for those who grieve the death of a friend or family member. We pray for all those who are facing surgery, in rehab after a recent surgery, receiving cancer treatments, and those who are in the hospital. We pray for those who suffer from addiction and mental illness, for caregivers who care for loved ones day in and day out. We pray for school teachers everywhere as they return to their teaching jobs, and we pray for the children, youth, and adults who are returning to classes after summer break. God of grace. God, you gave us your son, Jesus, out of pure love for your children. Help us to be disciples and make a difference in the world. Guide us with your Holy Spirit as we live lives worthy of your call to us. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, today we have the hunger offering, so please give generously. And let us remember those many blessings that we have as we give through our tithes and offerings.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Generous, transforming God, thank you for the blessing of honest labor through which you have provided these gifts for our hands to share with those in need. We dedicate them now as an expression of your love for the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Got some new members we want to introduce you to. If they'll come gather, Anna's here. Do we have, we had one other family, but I don't know whether they were able to be here or not. Maybe not, okay. Let me introduce you to Anna Jones. Anna joined with us last week, and she's not ashamed to admit that Kim Herod is her daughter. And uh, we are just so thankful to have her uh, in the area so that she can be a part of the church. And we're delighted to have her here. And I hope that you'll all meet Anna and uh, so that you'll all become who bodies in her life, important people to her as well as she seeks to be an important person to you. If you're visiting with us today, we're very glad you're here. We hope that you'll come back and worship with us again. And I remind you as you go into the world that those things that have most changed you in your life probably were not the principles that you read somewhere, but were the people that taught you the principles. It was those people, those who bodies, that changed you. You were changed by relationships. Now go into the world knowing that God wants that relationship with you in Jesus Christ and share that with everyone you meet. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forever. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, let me give you that so I don't...